Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building serverless applications with .NET on AWS. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the new features that has come to AWS SAM in the last week, and that is to add support for building and compiling native AOT based .NET 7 applications. And this is really exciting because it makes it really easy to start adding native AOT compilation to your .NET Lambda functions. And there's actually templates built into SAM that allow you to get started. So if I click over to my terminal window now and I run a SAM init to start a new project, and if I walk through the initialization wizard, I will get some pre-built examples for native AOT. So I can use a quick start, I want to use the hello world example. Of course, I don't want to use Python and zip files. And you can see number one on the list there is this new template for AOT.NET 7. So if I select that as an option, um, I don't want to add X-Ray, and I'm going to call my project Sam Native AOT. And this will take a few seconds now, and this will actually clone the template from the template's GitHub repo and actually create this example locally. Now this functionality is only available in version 1.64 of SAM and later. So if you've got SAM installed already, just ensure that you've got the latest version installed before you try to go ahead and do this. So I've opened that clone template up in my IDE now, and we can now have a look at what SAM has created for us. So out of the, out of the box, it's given us this function.cs file, and this has a pre built example for using API Gateway with AWS Lambda. So I do have another video which I will link to in the description for how exactly to use native AOT with Lambda. In this video we'll just focus on the SAM functionality and the SAM side of things. So we've got this function, this pre-built function, and it's given us our serialization context for the source generated serialization. And also the template has given us this id.xml file and it's already added the bootstrap um, so that our assembly doesn't get trimmed. Now let's say for a second we wanted to just introduce DynamoDB into the equation here as well. So let's just add a reference to the DynamoDB NuGet package. If I, when my ID loads, there we are. So I install um, DynamoDB. And then of course, because we are using an AWS SDK, that also means we need to add the core SDK library to our RDXML just to ensure that that doesn't get trimmed either. So now we're saying to the compiler, trim as much as you like, but please don't trim bootstrap or AWS SDK.core. And you'll need to do that if you are using any of the SDKs. If we now go and have a look at the SAM template that gets generated, there's some really interesting new things in here. So you see the template it's given us, it has set the handler to bootstrap. So of course, native AOT uses the executable assemblies feature of .NET. So the actual assembly itself is the executable. And the Lambda runtime, when you're using a custom runtime, will look for a file named bootstrap. So that's really important that your assembly that gets generated is actually called bootstrap. And we can see that in the assembly name property in the csproj file there. Now, what makes this work really well is this metadata section. So by default, if you're using AWS SAM and you specify the provided AL2 runtime, SAM will look for a make file and it will try and compile your application code using the instructions in a make file. Now in the latest release of AWS SAM, this, this, this .NET 7 build method has been added. And when I add this build method of .NET 7, when I run a SAM build command, SAM is gonna to know to use the Amazon Lambda tools, .NET Global CLI tool, instead of trying to find a make file. And then of course the functionality is just offloaded to the built-in tooling. So let's go and have a look at that. Now if I flick back to my terminal window, <clears throat> and I just clear some of this out, so I go back to the root of my repository now where my SAM template is, and I'm just gonna run a SAM build. 
And you see what will happen when I will run a SAM build is that it will actually start to run the tooling from Amazon Lambda tools. And what this will actually do is this will spin up a Docker container that's based on Amazon Linux 2. And my code will actually get compiled within that Docker container. And that all happens because of this publish AOT property in my csproj file. So what the Amazon Lambda tools are doing are reading the csproj file, and if the tooling finds a publish AOT true flag, it will then compile the code within a Docker container, not locally on your machine. Because remember, for native AOT to work, you need to compile the code on the same OS that the code is going to run on which in this case is Amazon Linux 2. I'm just gonna pause the video here. Native AOT compilation does take a few minutes normally. So I'm just gonna hit pause and we'll come back when this compilation is complete. So one of the things you might notice while this is compiling is that nothing appears to be happening. But if I actually go and open up um, the Docker program on my machine, I can see that there is actually a running container and that was started 23 seconds ago. So the terminal won't actually pipe the, the logs back from Docker, but you can actually go and have a look at your running containers. And we can see here that there's a, there's a temp lambda build container, and that is based on the .NET 7 build image. And we can actually click into that container there, and we can actually have a look at the logs within the container itself. We can see that it's just started doing the native AOT compilation to generate the native code for Amazon Linux 2. Sam has actually finished compiling now and you can see if we look back through the logs from Sam build we can actually see that the docker image was pulled and ran and then we actually get them logs back onto our terminal. Now if I just open up um, my file system we can actually go and have a look at the generated AWS Sam folder and if we look in here you see we do actually have a file back on our file system. So when that compilation is running within the Docker container, our local file system is attached as a volume. So now we have locally on our machine, a binary that's ready to run on Amazon Linux 2. If I was to try and run this bootstrap binary now, it would fail because of course my machine is Windows 10, not Amazon Linux 2. So if I go back to my terminal window now, and I can now just run a SAM deploy and pass in the guided flag because this is the first time I'm gonna deploy this application from my machine. And I can now walk through and just deploy this application. And you see, I've not had to worry about trying to spin up an Amazon Linux 2 instance and do all that compilation there. That's all handled by the tooling. So it's really easy to get started and begin to build and deploy native AOT based applications. So if we now call this um, native AOT SAM, deploy it to EUS1, go through the instructions here. If you're not familiar with AWS SAM, I have a full playlist on this channel for step-by-step -step AWS SAM with .NET. So I'd encourage you to go and check that out if some of this isn't familiar to you. And then Sam's gonna go off and actually deploy this application now. So while Sam is just actually deploying, let's just go and have a look at some of the performance characteristics of .NET 7 native AOT. And to do that, we actually there is actually a repo on GitHub that covers the, um, where we run benchmarking at AWS to look at the different runtimes across Lambda. And if we scroll down to the bottom here and we look at .NET 7, you can actually see some of the performance characteristics here of native AOT on Lambda. So this is um, the latency, including a cold start. And traditionally, .NET has had quite slow cold starts. But now this performance we're seeing is comparable to runtimes like Go and Python and TypeScript. This 581 millisecond P99 cold start latency is directly comparable if we go and look at Go, for example, and we look at the cold start latency in Go, we've got very similar performance characteristics between .NET and Go, and the same applies with Python and TypeScript. So if you're building low latency, high performance serverless applications, native AOT is a really interesting proposition to still allow you to use .NET to build your applications, but get that really low latency performance on Lambda. 
we can see now that our application has finished deploying and if I go and actually hit the API endpoint now, I will get back that hello world message and you can see just how fast that returns from a cold start. And native AOT has been built for these low, um, small package size and fast startup times. So it's a really, really interesting use case for Lambda. Now, Native AOT might not be the best tool for all of Lambda functions as fast as it seems. If you're building maybe a backend processing Lambda function, maybe sourced by SQS, and you don't have these low latency requirements, it may still be beneficial to use the .NET 6 managed runtime. Because .NET 7 introduces some challenges with your code, you know, the, the compile time is relatively slow, the binary that gets generated is quite large, and also, you lose some of the language features of .NET, like unconstrained reflection, and you have to think about source-generated serialization. So it's not a tool for all Lambda functions, but it is a really interesting use case for low latency applications. And of course, using AWS SAM and the Amazon Lambda tooling, it makes it incredibly easy to get started with building native AOT compiled applications on Lambda. That's all we have for this video. If, as always, if you like this, then please like, please subscribe and please share. And I will see you next time.